What's up, Collider TV Talk fans? Josh McCougar here with Thad Williams and special guest Sinead DeFries. Hi, guys. Hey, What's Sinead. Up? How's it hey, going? Hey, I'm good. How are you? Yeah. I must have done a good job last week because you, you asked did. me to come back you this did. week. You did. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, it was the biggest week in television really all was. year. Oh, really uh, yeah. So, uh, it's the marvelous week. It, it mm-hmm. really was. It's, it was a Christmas present we could all really enjoy. Or yeah. Hanukkah present. Or Hanukkah present. Sorry. You're right. It came out during Hanukkah. <laughs> it did. It did. Uh, ten episodes of Just Glorious. We are going to do a review on the TV Talk feed. You guys can, we'll see, there'll be a separate review that will pop up in video and po- podcast form. Yeah, but it, should, just, it should already be there, I think. It'll be up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So go back in time and listen to it if Correct. you haven't yet. Correct. So it, it's up there. Full Our, spoilers. And uh, just on this show, and just in case you didn't watch the review and you don't want to watch the review, whatever whatever you want to do, we're here for you. We're just we're just nice people. Get your general <laughs> overall thoughts. I know we've tweet, tweeted about it, but mm-hmm. fuck it. There's nothing else more important in TV right really now isn't. than the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. You are absolutely correct. Uh, overall thoughts on the season, just real quick, Sinead. Uh, I thought it was incredible. I thought it was even better than the first, which I I knew I was going to love it mm. because I love everything about the show. I love the way it's shot. I love the acting. I love the writing is incredible. Mm-hmm. But I loved it even more than the first season, which is I did not expect that. I, right. I knew I was going to love it. I never expected to like be obsessed with it the way that I was. Mm-hmm. But I will say that if you watched the first season and you weren't like a couple of the negative comments I heard, though there are very few, very few, um, were like. You know, it's just the writing is a little bit like jumpy and it's just kind of, sure. right. It's a certain type. Of, it's a style. It's yes. a style of comedy. Yeah. I will say that this season, I felt like all of those characters that are a little intense in the first season, mm-hmm. they evolved so much. Um, my favorite being like um, Joel. Yeah, Joel. They made him so likable. Uh-huh. But my favorite's actually Tony Shalhoub. Oh, oh Tony Shalhoub. Yeah. He just... was, this was his season. Yeah. It was incredible Weisman. from beginning to end. I w- literally laughed so hard at mostly everything uh-huh. he said. And the acting was incredible. And the first season, it's almost like hard to love him. You're just like, who's this distant, weird, crazy? Uh-huh. This season, I was like, this guy is the best. He made the greatest turn in Paris. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, God. It was, it was so like, great. Full, yeah. All the characters like totally evolved. They all had really great arcs. Yeah. So, I mean, if you didn't like it, you got to give this show a chance again because it's amazing. And if you liked season one and you haven't watched season two, well, what the hell are you waiting for? There's been a couple shows that have honestly like kind of grabbed my attention so much that I think about them all the time and I get really upset we were tweeting about it. You were on there as well. Emma Fife chimed in. Uh, quite like Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. There, yeah. I mean, maybe like old Sopranos episodes, Those some of those seasons of Breaking Bad, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. It's very few shows that you like lie awake at night and like Amanda rolls over and she's like, we finished it too fast. I said, I know. It's the worst is... part about the biz. Yeah. It really we is. have a whole year before we get any more. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, it's actually depressing. It really is. Yeah. But we're going to talk a full review uh, that is up on the channel. So if you guys want to listen to that, watch that, whatever it is, Sinead will be there. We're going to rock it out. But let's talk some, uh, some TV news here. Uh, the Mandalorian is quickly becoming like the. New York Yankees of television. <laughs> I know. It's just like, we're so going to add funny. everybody. We're just, Does that mean I have to hate it? it? Yeah. Does that mean I have to hate it because it's the New York Yankees? Yes. Every There's just going to be like 900 cameos in this. You know that every agent in Hollywood is getting calls from every client being like, yo, yeah. how do I get in the Mandalorian show? Yeah. yeah. How do I get in Mandalorian? Because they haven't made it into a Star Wars movie right. or saga or whatever. Or they're like dressed as the stormtroopers, like the Daniel Craig <laughs> thing. And now yeah. they're like, put me in the Mandalorian. Just like, I don't care. I could be a guy at bar, I, yeah. whatever the case may be. It yeah, feels peasant like number forty-seven. <laughs> right, <laughs> but what's, sandy what's guy. Like, yeah, we're they're gonna keep adding people, but you know what? We're gonna keep hearing about all of it too. Like every single person that yep. they add, we will hear about it. Giancarlo Esposito, aka Gus Fring, Werner Herzog, aka uh, what's Werner Herzog? Werner Herzog. He's like one of the most famous documentarians of all time. <laughs> he did Grizzly Man. <laughs> yeah, you remember Grizzly Man? Yes, yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does a lot of voice work, so I'm wondering if he's gonna play like mm. the voice of an alien, helmet mm. guy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And then Carl Weathers. Yeah. Who, uh, you know, he is he's Apollo Creed. Yeah. And he's also, uh, I mean, he's not Billy D. Williams in the sense of no. Lando Calrissian, but could he be like Lando Calrissian's brother? 
Maybe. He's a little, I mean, timeline wise, I think he's too old. Oh, okay. Good. I'm wondering if he's Giancarlo's father, uh, if they are playing father and son okay. in some fashion. When does this show come out? Uh, late 2019. It's going gonna, it's gonna to yeah. be the launching show for Disney Plus, the streaming okay. service. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, okay, they're so filming it's it right now. It's not that far away. No, right. no, no, no. So that makes me a little less annoyed that the, there's yeah. been so much news about it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's in production right now and it's filming in, uh, it's filming in like Manhattan Beach. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so it's in, it's <sighs> in. Manhattan Beach. Yeah, yeah. Should we go? Manhattan Beach Studios. Let's go visit. <laughs> Should we go talk about yeah. that set or what? Do you know, yeah. where, you know what else shot Manhattan Beach Studio? The OC. That was my first yeah. gig when I moved to California. I was an extra on like one of the last versions yeah. of the OC. Well, last hopefully the Mandalorian the will be as good <laughs> as, as the, the OC. OC. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and that could be Misha Barton's comeback. She's like, guys. It's not. She's going to be on the hills. She's making a comeback. Is she? Really? Yeah. She got cast in the uh, the revival of the hills. <laughs> yeah. This I think I knew. Making huge moves, Misha. Huge. We support it. From scripted to reality. <laughs> At Misha Barton's height, basically, po- like post the OC kind of situation, I'm walking in New York in the in my when I lived in New York, I'm walking my neighbor, and she's walking along with Andrew C W K or, or like that crazy rock star that she was dating. I forget oh, yeah, what yeah, his yeah, name yeah. was. And they stopped C-W-K. outside. A-K. Yeah, I think it's just W K. Okay. Andrew C W the C Andrew the C W K. Yeah. yeah. He's uh, really into melodrama, uh, hot teens, that kind of stuff. Um, And uh, we're walking along, and my brother's like, I think that's Misha Barton. And she looks, they they are hammered. They are Mm -hmm. hammered. And she's looking in the window of the store, and she's pounding on it, going, your stuff sucks! And, like, screaming. And Ben's like, I think we should just walk by. Don't say anything. I don't don't think we get an autograph or anything. I was like, yeah, clearly. Oh, God. Yeah. That's but, weird. Uh, regardless, we, we did. Okay, so we just talked Mandalorian real quick, and you said Disney Plus, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not in our rundown do we have it right now, but they just said that it came across many a different outlet that they're not going to renew any of the Marvel properties anytime yeah. right. soon. No, 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 no. And, 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 and in fact, uh, a story came out yesterday, I think, in Variety okay. that says that the contracts are such, uh, the deal between Marvel and Netflix, Netflix is that those characters can't be can't be recycled into Disney properties for two years? Oh, so their mm. deals, so the deals and the characters don't expire until at least twenty twenty. That's brutal. If not twenty twenty one, because we did find out ne- uh, Punisher's premiering in January, mm-hmm. which means it'll be canceled in February. Right, exactly. And and then or even January. Or yeah, yeah. They 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 launch it with the cancellation notice. <laughs> right. Uh, and then enjoy this last. And season. then Jessica it's Jones, done. whenever they decide. Right. And so the the earliest they can bring them back into the Marvel Disney fold is. 2020, what? at which point I assume, yeah, 2020, so 2021. So basically these, these actors are done. No, there's no way that they're going to hold them on retainer no, for no. two years. Yeah. So That's, I actually feel, I feel bad for them. Like, that sucks. sucks. Yeah. Like, there's a lot Except of things for... wrong. <laughs> Yeah. Your elevator buddy. Danny Rand. Danny Rand. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, there's a lot of things wrong with those properties, but it's not just like, it's not like the acting is no. the main no. issue. There were so many things technically wrong with the way that they decided to do those shows and yes. I, most of it came down to it was ju- there was just not enough story developed to tell over that many episodes mm-hmm. and it was just like it got really boring and yep it's just and it makes me sad because like like Punisher is actually good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was really good. Punisher's I don't know really where good. Punisher was when yeah. we were having to literally sit through the worst binge of my life, which was Iron, Iron Fist. Fist. Yeah, right. And so I just like it sucks. I feel bad for them. Yeah, it's th- the hard part too. Was I feel like Daredevil set the bar very, right. very high, right? And I think there's a lot of IP for Daredevil as opposed to maybe yeah. a Luke Cage or an Iron Fist or J- even Jessica Jones, who I didn't even know about really. Uh, and, and so you're talking about the casual comic book fan, the comic su- superhero fan that would want to tune into these, right? So like a guy like my brother watched Daredevil and was like, this is awesome. Yeah. He didn't watch any of the other ones and he no. really didn't care. Then the Punisher comes and he's like, oh, I'll watch the Punisher because those are huge names. So right. even your your ancillary right. comic book fans who may be collected or didn't know or know superhero know those guys. The other three guys, they really tried to jam 13 episodes when they really only had about six. Yep. Right. Because there's not enough, like I said, there's just like, th- there's not enough story to tell there's there. Yeah. Or if there was, they should have developed it better. <laughs> right. But like it didn't seem like after watching 13 episodes, our critique every single time, remember, was always, why was this so? long yep. right. the show this story was done after episode seven like yep. why 100%. did we keep and it's that's sad like, it is yeah it's and, awful and we lost a lot of opportunity i think because of that yeah 
But I mean, who know? I mean, it, yes, we said that they were canceling because of the Disney thing and everything. Yeah. But they also maybe were canceling them because there's no point in keeping all of them yeah. if no. they cancel one. Do you know what I mean? Right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it makes more sense for Marvel long term to wait for the rights to come back. Just yeah. like they're, they're playing the long game on all this stuff, all the Fox properties. Like, I mean, they, they don't own a lot of their characters. Like, there are a lot of them that are in limbo. You've got X-Men right. at Fox. You've got Fantastic Four. Uh, Spider-Man at Sony. Those basically. will all be reverting mm-hmm. to Disney when the merger happens. Uh, and then, yeah, Spider-Man's at Sony. All the Spider-Man... Venom's like, at Sony. Ancillary characters are at Sony. Um and then, yeah, they've they've made very weird deals over the because like Kingpin right. is a Spider-Man villain that's also in Daredevil, so they used him for Daredevil. Right. Whereas now they're Sony used him in Into the Spider Verse, right? Uh, which comes out today okay. and is incredible. Did you say it? I heard, it, is I heard the, it was amazing. It is yeah. the it is one of the best superhero movies of all time. Yeah, I had friends like text it's me inc- and was like, is incredible. Harrison old enough to go to the movie theater yet? And I was like, uh, no, but I will go. <laughs> it's, it, it, it is a treat for adults and I, I and children alike. I, it's 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 a perfect, perfect movie. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, what is the thing that he likes? That he like you have to, the little, little balls? Oh, Disney Zoom Zooms. <laughs> Disney Zoom Zooms. <laughs> I, I'm not familiar with Disney. It's Zoom like Zoom. little Jap. It's like the Japanese Disney characters. Oh. They're adorable, but he has like a he has a Zoom Zoom advent calendar, so he gets to open a new Zoom Zoom every day. And every single day, I have to explain to him how an advent calendar works. Because <laughs> he'd be like, <laughs> rah, rah, yeah, he'll be like, ooh, number eleven, and then he's like, number twelve. Like immediately, I'm like, no, this is not how one it works. a day. Yeah, <laughs> but he's yeah. gonna get he's gonna get twenty four, twenty five of them at the end. Twenty four, and he that's already a good, has. That's a, that's he a good already collection. has so many. Like he has yeah. so many, but it's like these little Japanese. Japanese characters and they have like shorts like and that's how he found him. He found him on YouTube. Oh. Um, yeah. And so then now he, he we have to have all of the toys obviously. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Of course. All of the toys. Just all of the parent. toys. Yeah. But yeah, so they they're, they're playing the long game. I think when the when the rights come back to them, you'll see Daredevil make its way into uh, something somewhere yeah. like mm-hmm. they'll they'll use the big prop the big properties Luke Cage might make a reappearance but these particular actors I yeah. I highly doubt yeah. Charlie Cox's phone's been off the hook as soon as the cancellation <laughs> notices started right. coming through right. <laughs> uh, Mike Coulter same thing uh, everyone ever <laughs> the big names that are involved with these mm. these properties I think I was are gonna be so rude for a second because I'm just picturing like everyone's calling them and then uh, Danny Rand's just uh, like, is like guys he's just like sitting there like. His phone buzzes and it's just a notification. He's like, oh, <laughs> damn it. Doop, 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 yeah. doop, doop, doop. Uh, that's so mean. Uh, I, I didn't finish Iron Fist Season 2 because the cancellation notice came in the middle of it. Yeah. Uh, but what I saw, I liked. What I saw, I actually yeah. I heard did. that. I actually. did like. I heard it's only ten episodes. It's a little. They, I think I almost uh, punched more, the person that said that to me. More condensed. <laughs> They're like, you should try it again. And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Come here. That's uh, yeah. Get over here. Yeah. That was like when I told you last week that I was still watching The Walking, the walking Dead. Dead. He said The Walking Dead got good again. It did. I was like, l- like lurched myself over the table. It really did. It got it got good again, and I'm really looking forward to the second half of this season. I'm sorry. All right, let's move on. Uh, wait, wait, don't tell me is getting a TV version Woo! again. Woo! Do you watch Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me? No, I, it's, it's, I was uh, it's really an NPR excited. Show. It's great. It's fantastic. Mm, interesting. It's, it's one of the funniest, uh, I mean, if not the funniest game show. Yeah. Definitely. And it's it's only on NPR. It's on Saturdays, okay. so you can listen to it on NPR. You can also get on the app and, you know, okay. the yeah. podcast form or whatever. And it's hysterical. And it's always live. You know, it comes from it's a live well, right. it's, it's a news. It's a news quiz. So every yeah. week. It's, the, the, it's all current. The questions are all about current events. Yeah. Oh, and so it's a little, it's political, but it's not like, it's not like super political no. in one side or the other. It's it's it's, but it's much more just like comedians co- making joke, making yeah. lighthearted jokes about the, about current events. Like most people think that NPR is very left leaning, mm-hmm. but this show because it is. It, really isn't though. When you look at NPR, it's National Public Radio. Yeah. It is right down the middle. It all depends on how you look at how the news is read. That's right. all. But NPR, wait, wait, don't tell me, is straight down the middle. It, it does I'm telling you. <laughs> anyway. I'm just giving a hard time. I really don't care at all. <laughs> like, I swear I don't care at yeah. all. You can't make me laugh today. Ever, I can't breathe. The only thing I've ever listened to on NPR is their movie reviews and the one woman who like literally makes me almost crash my car every weekend. I don't even know her name, but I talk, I talk matching in her every weekend. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, but uh, that's the only thing I've ever listened to on NPR. Okay. That's fair. That's yeah, fair. That's fair. Well, th- this show is really entertaining. Okay, I'm excited. Um, but they did a version in 2008. They went to pilot and it never it went. Never, to it never went to series. This time they're partnering with Wilshire Studios, yeah. which is a very, very popular unscripted mm-hmm. com- company that NBC Universal owns. They do. Uh, they do a lot of the. Um, 
uh, a lot of the the back uh, like the, the the talking shows yeah. i think they i think they created some of those uh they 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 do right now they're doing busy phillips's uh mm. talk e show, show on mm-hmm. e which mm-hmm. is really entertaining uh and they do they, because they're owned by nbc universal they do a lot of stuff for nbc properties mm-hmm. so i don't know if this show will pr- end up being on an nbc property uh hollywood game night's a very popular celebrity driven game show sure. right now uh this is also going to be like they're going to switch the format a little bit so it's going to be celebrity driven uh, they're going to give out cash prizes that go to charities. Cool. Yeah. Uh, the joke on the on the radio program is that uh, viewers call in and they if they win the game, they get the announcer or anyone they choose at this point uh, to record a voicemail message for them yeah. on their phone. And they oh, have like cool. legendary news that's announcers funny. being like, you've reached yeah. like, you know, Carl Castle. Yeah, that cool. yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. How, uh, uh, Bill Curtis, who narrated Anchorman. Right. Uh, and is there is their announcer right yeah. now? That's and, so and awesome. So he's got this very like gravelly voice. He's just like he's Car- he's Walter Cronkite. These are just like old news announcers, you yeah, know, yeah, guys yeah. that, and they and yeah, they do your voicemail. But that's basically all you get now. You're kind of getting charity cash prizes. It is kind of weird because. I would imagine the format of it because a lot like the format where the celebrities write out their monologues yeah. may change a little bit or it'll be because that a lot of those fall flat. Yes. Yes. Um, and I think that I think that and they, they specifically mentioned that they're going to rework some games to make them more visual. Right. And more uh, uh, applicable to a television crowd. And right. I think that that makes sense. Yeah. It's because I mean, it's it's a show that's made for radio. So it is very. It is very driven on the monologue and on the the, the back and forth jokes. I feel like they're going to do a little bit. I hope I hope they're not going to do like shticky games yeah. like Ellen. Like I was watching Ellen's Game of Games mm-hmm. uh, earlier this week. Uh, they they had like a holiday episode, and it's you know it's a lot of big sets and like pie in the face kind of things, right, right, and right. wire wire work, and people falling falling through like trap doors and stuff. It's very it's very visceral. Uh, experience and very visual for for television. Ellen takes like the game night that you would have at your apartment with friends, and then adds basically the script of Die Hard yeah. to yeah. it, and like four million dollars. Yes, yes, correct. A large yeah. budget. A like, large instead budget. of plinko chips, we're going to actually throw people down a plinko. You're like, <laughs> exactly. All right. All right then. Yeah. Finally. Whereas Hollywood Game Night, it's a lo- much more low low tech. Yes. Yeah. And so I wonder if they're going to do a little bit more like that. Somewhere uh, in the middle, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. I also wonder if Peter Sagal's going to host it. They say they haven't picked a host yet, which is why I, I reached out to your sister. I assume he's not. <laughs> I assume he's not going to host it. Uh, he he does a great job with the radio program. Yeah. Uh, I he's not really. He, he doesn't seem like the kind of host that they would have for a celebrity-driven show that would drive right. eyeballs to the program. I could see them taking taking one of the regular panelists and making them the host of the TV version, right. like a Maz, Tom Bodet, uh, uh, a Maz Jabrani or a Mo Rocca, uh, or maybe Paula Poundstone. Probably not. Paula Poundstone. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Um, they'll probably just like now that they're moving to TV and under NBC Unite, they'll probably just start from over, like yeah. start from scratch, yeah. and be like. All right, let's just host here's a Ryan cast. Seacrest. Yeah, exactly. It's it, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be an NBC host. Yeah, thank from you. an NBC show. L- I mean, I, I'm I would just imagine that we don't get Chris Hardwick, and I think we can all be excited yeah. that that isn't a thing. Yeah. This is the wall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, uh, let's move on. We got a trailer for True Detective season three, the second trailer of this. Yeah, this now is just like, I mean, it's back to basics. Yeah, it's the show that it used to be. Now, Did you, you watch season two? No. I watched season one. And it changed your life. We uh, talked I about watched, last week. Yeah, so um, I actually did not watch this trailer because I don't want to know anything else. Uh, um, I don't I don't want to, I don't want to know anything about this show, <laughs> about what I'm about going to. I know. The true detective it's truly about a, it's a true detective. It's true. Mm-hmm. It's true and it's detective. But um <laughs> it truly changed my life. Like it was the one show I think this year that I am the most grateful to have watched, even over Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I have never been so enamored by a, t- a television show yeah. uh, ever. I don't think in my life, which is huge like that is a huge deal right so i watched every episode of true detective like on the edge of my chair feeling emotions i didn't know existed in my dark black soul and so then i watched the little uh, the first trailer for uh, season three and then i was like all right i'm good i don't want to know anything else Uh because i want to experience it without any sort of bias towards any characters or anything like that but um to say i'm excited is yeah 
January thirteenth. Like, I mean, it is yeah. it is Happy New Year for us TV watchers. I cannot like, believe it. Welcome to it. Thank God, Here there's something amazing coming really soon. I know. I know. Yeah, uh, I, I I I was really impressed with this trailer. <laughs> I was really impressed with this trailer. Uh, because it felt like it was really, it was like, we're doing, remember everything you liked about season one? We're going back to that. Yes. Like, a lot of the shots in this felt very reminiscent of season one. Mm-hmm. You've got you've got the crime. You've got the timeline, uh, multiple timelines. Mm-hmm. You've got the cops driving in the car, talking to one another. You've got the relationship that kind of looks like it's going to get fractured right. because of the crime. You've even got a modern day interview mm-hmm. uh, like they did in season one. It's a lot of those same elements. And I think if they had done and the- Stephen Dorff, who you didn't know was still acting. I thought he was just promoting jewels. Blue cigarettes. Yeah. That's all I thought that he uh, was doing. And here he is. I'm like, I'm watching the trailer and I'm thinking to myself, is that Steven Dorff? <laughs> so I like watch the whole trailer. And then I play it again. And I don't go to the IMDb. And I'm, I just, I looked at my computer, hit pause. And I said, that's freaking Steven Dorff. So I went to IMDb and sure, sure enough, enough, it's Dorff. That's so funny. It's Dorff. He doesn't have a beard. Nope. He doesn't look like he like had just woken up. From like a bender of two weeks, yeah. Like he, it's Stephen Dorff acting, and he's in like a high-profile project. But remember, season one took two jokes of like current Hollywood at the time. McConaughey and Harrelson's yeah. star power was uh-huh. not that high right. when yeah. season one premiered. Yeah, and they tried to replicate it with season two with Vince Vaughn and Colin Farrell, and didn't work. Well, Colin Farrell did a great job. I, no, 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 they did. They did good jobs. Yeah. I'm just saying, like the the season as a whole, obviously was oh, a yeah. was a was a failure. Total failure. And I think that the advantage that they have right now is it's been so long since season one mm-hmm. that it's okay to look like they're copying season one again. Right. I'm fine because with that. they're like, Everyone, hey, it worked. Everyone's like, thank God. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I'm so grateful about it. Okay, so here I want to ask your opinions because Joshua, Josh. My boyfriend's like, don't watch season two. My mom was like, you absolutely need to watch season two. Josh was like, I don't know if you need to watch it. I don't think you do because I think I, I, I think because it's such. Is that what I sound like? <laughs> yes. No. I don't know. Of course not. I don't you know. need to watch it. You, do, you totally don't sound like that. That's right. Okay. <laughs> no, you don't. Yes, he does. Uh, and. I don't think you do because it's so disjointed. I mean, all, like it's an anthology show. I know, so but, it's sh- like, but should I though? I don't think so because it's that, I, oh my OCD. It I makes watched. It tick. I do watched. It. I watched the whole series as it was airing, mm-hmm. and you know, the first episode I was like, oh no, this is not good. And then I kept <laughs> watching. I was like, maybe it's <laughs> going to turn, and it never did. And it like the res- resolution was not satisfying. It didn't make me feel like oh well, the, that was sort of worth it at the, in the long run. Like it just exists. Yeah, and I think that the creators would probably prefer if everyone forgot about it because it didn't work. They know, like they've been very open that they rushed it into production. The scripts were not ready. HBO was looking at their bottom line and not at the creative. And they've actually, like, the head of HBO apologized about it. He was like, "We put this on television before it was ready, and this time they they said we're take as long as you need." do as many rewrites as you need to do until you're happy with the script because he spent so long on season one like he was writing that show for like a decade before right. it got bought right and then season two just went right into production and it was half baked and it was and, in LA that's the problem they, we've seen so much stuff yeah, in Los Angeles yeah and I think part of that was a production Crime problem they're yeah. like we just need to get this going now so right. let's just shoot it in Los Angeles you know LA you don't need to do any research like just do it right. and this one I feel like they're they 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 supposedly took their time. It seems a lot more crafted. Mahershala, I was reading a really interesting interview with Mahershala. They originally went out to him for the supporting role for Stephen Dorff's role. Mm. And then he sat down with the, sat down with the, uh, with the creator and was like, no, 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 I should be the lead. And I like, and he actually, he said that he actually showed him photographs of, uh, of a relative who was a sheriff, like a state trooper or a sheriff's deputy or something in that time period. And he was like, there were black officers in the South during this time period. It's true. It works. And you can bring a lot more to the table if you tell this through the eyes of a black man that was in this job in, in that time period. Interesting. And so he really made a strong pitch for it, not just as him for a person, but also for the story to be told through the eyes of a person of color. And so it sounds like that's really changed the storyline because of it. And 
giving him a leading role, which I'm really excited about. Mm, right. yeah. And awesome. and and then Dorf uh, can kind of come in as the as the the sidekick. Um, <sighs> Oh, there's going to be so much smoking. Yes, there's going to so be so much, much smoking. smoking. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. I don't know. I'm really excited about this. I don't think season two needs to be ever vi- re- revisited. Okay. At all. All right. Well, I sorry, Taylor yeah. Kitsch. Yeah. I really wanted Taylor Kitsch to succeed, and uh, it didn't happen. All right. So we've got episode titles for Stranger Things season three, all of which I nobody really knows what that means, but no. You got Susie, do you copy the mall rats, the case of the missing lifeguard, the sauna test, the source, the birthday, the bite and the battle and the battle of star court. The trailer ends with in the summer of 1985. The adventure continues. Uh, Cool. Yeah. (laughs) The video that they released with the announcements has over four million views. It's it's just. Yeah. It's just the titles. And they did the same thing for season two. And it just like everyone was like, what does it mean? What does it mean? I mean. Uh, have you have you been following the marketing for this, like with the mall the mall stuff? Listen, I love that people love Stranger Things. I have not watched this show uh. since season one. Uh. No, you didn't. You didn't do. Oh, four or you just five. Gave up. Ah. I, I just I didn't it wasn't like your bag. It. I ke- I kept trying to like it. That's fair. I yeah. tried very hard to like it, and I was just like, I can't. I will care about say. This. I will say, season two isn't any doesn't touch season one. It does not. It was still good. It was fine. It it, it, <clears throat> it fell into a season two lull that yeah. so many shows I mean, it wasn't, do. It wasn't True Detective season two. No. Uh, it was fine. Like I remember going, getting through all the episodes, and midway through season two, I was like, all right. Yeah. I get it. Like yeah. this whole thing. It, it was trying to expand the universe and sort of failed a little bit. But uh, I again, on these things, I don't consider this news. No. I just don't. I just don't. It's just the titles. I, I yeah. just think it's fascinating that, it, that this teaser video that they put up uh, four days ago, mm-hmm. it already has over four million views because mm-hmm. people are so freaking out about what do the titles mean, what like anything Stranger Things just like mm-hmm. pops, right. and that's and that's like the cool thing about it. Yeah, I like I like that people get super excited about shows, you know, because yeah. it's like that little community that you know is always going to like be online to gush over your favorite show with you. I guess I just like I can't understand the appeal about. This specific, I, I, I think I understood in the beginning more because it was like the nostalgia, a Net, and like also like a Netflix. You know how Netflix is too. Right. Once something pops on Netflix, the entire world talks about right. it. Right. Yes. It's like so easy to binge things. Did like you watch this. Stranger Things? Did yeah. you watch it? I, you but have I just, it? I don't. Oh. I don't get the the. I, I really don't. Yeah, it's fine. That's it's totally. totally fine. I, I totally understand. I would say if you're if you if you ever have any interest. Finishing season one might might change your opinion. Yeah, a lot of people have said to me, they're like, "You need to try again," because like maybe I just got stuck it's, in a rut. In yeah, the in like yeah. one of the middle episodes. Yeah, I am excited. Uh, season two, they tried to go to nine episodes. Yeah, and it felt a little bloated. Uh, they're going back to eight for season three. At least they figured out their bloatedness. Yeah, mm-hmm. took yeah. a little gas. And they're like, sex. we're yeah. yeah, we're like, we're gonna we're gonna, we're we're gonna let out the air and yeah. just go back to a tight eight episodes. Um, they've got a brand new location. Like Starcourt is this big mall that they've been teasing. Oh, yeah, yeah, because um, they're building it. Or they, well, I read I read I read a blog. They took a they took an abandoned mall, the, a mall that's got like a J C Penney and said nothing else. Nice. They t- they bought like they rented the entire wing that had died. Renovated the whole thing to look like it did back in the eighties. What the oh, hell kind so of tight. money? Is it's insane. That? They built a whole new food court fr- straight out of eighty five. They brought in all the old, re- like the old orange Julius. There's an old orange Julius. There's like an old like McDonald's logo. The whole thing. The budgets uh, on this thing is just it's, insane. It's nuts. I, I I guess Walking Dead had used the malls too because it's in, uh, outside of Atlanta. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they they rebuilt the whole mall and that's where so much of the action takes place. Mm. And apparently the finale, the battle for Starcourt. I'm I think there's a lot of rumors that the mall. It's going to be built on some of the land that w- has been affected by uh, so much of the paranormal stuff. Gotcha. Uh, and so it's going to be kind of like the mall becomes the haunted place, whereas the middle school was kind of like the hotbed for, uh, s- for the first two seasons. Because gotcha. I think they're in, that's the upside they, down. They're, this is the summer before they go to high school. I think. Gotcha. So it's the summer of '85. I think they're that's heading a big summer. heading into heading into high school. And yeah, and I, uh... I'm I'm really excited. <laughs> I'm really excited about the show. I loved. I love. Do you know where things. that was going? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, a, it's a big summer. It's a yeah, big summer. It, it is a big summer. It, yeah, yeah. We've all been there. All right. Speaking of somebody, a show that somebody's obsessed with. Thad, why don't you? I'm going to give you 
two minutes on Star Trek. All right. Real quick, Star Trek news. I know no one else cares about it but me, and Correct. that's fine. Uh, they just lo- they just released a trailer for s- season two of Discovery. Oh man, did they discover it yet? They they are still discovering it. Okay. Spock Spock and Burnham talk for the first time in the trailer. True. We hear Spock talking for a little bit. We see a lot of scenes between Spock and Pike. Uh-huh. These are classic characters from the original series that Got they brought it. back. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm I like the cautiously one syllable, opti- the cautiously names. optimistic about this show. <laughs> okay. I really am. Uh, season one was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, okay. but I think in terms of Star Trek shows, it definitely is not the worst season one that we've ever seen in one of the spinoffs. Okay. Uh, and so I think hopefully they can right the ship, pardon oh. the pun, and get us a really good season two. This is not your father's Star Trek. This is not your grandfather's Star Trek. <laughs> it does not excite a lot of the older fan base, and that's uh. fine. I personally like it, which is a majority of. It the is show. a majority. It is. A, we are a. We and I'm hoping that this breathes new life into it all. You guys are like baseball. Hey, <laughs> hey sorry, now. But like the average age of people that were really upset I know, I that know. the Dodgers weren't on TV were like 58 year old men. That's, you're not wrong. You're yeah. not wrong. And then <laughs> it, other other news, real quick. Uh, the. The Picard spinoff show oh. uh, with Patrick Stewart coming back uh, to, as John Luke Picard. House of Picards. House of- <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> uh, it's going to film in California. Oh, they got a time. California uh, Talif- California state tax credit to film here. Uh, it's the first Star Trek show since Enterprise to film in California, Los Angeles, because okay. Discovery Films in Vancouver. Uh, uh, the movies moved to Vancouver for Star Trek Beyond. Star Trek has a very storied history filming on like the Paramount lot and gotcha. in and around California locations. Uh, so I'm glad that they managed to make Picard stay in California. Uh, we still don't know what the show's about, what the title is, what where the, what the setting is. If I just any other gave old you the people, title, House of Picard. You're, you're probably right. You're probably <laughs> they right. They should definitely go go with that one <laughs> right. for sure. It works. It I, works. So as head of um, the Star Trek Nerd Squad, yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what what the CBS All Access? Yes, they started doing that because they put Star Trek on there. Correct. But now I can't watch anything else on CBS without having to pay money. Do you know that they don't even have a regular app? You have to have CBS it's All true. Access. It's true. What kind of BS is that? It's because they don't. It's they're not part of Hulu. That's why. I don't. Yeah, and so they they have their own deal. I was like, this is literally this is last week. I was like, this is Star Trek's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there having that thought. I was it's like, fair. if Star Trek was not on CBS, they would not be making me pay extra to watch anything else on CBS. And yeah. I don't even remember what I was trying to watch. Just like I, something that I heard and I couldn't watch it. I do have a I do ha- I I have a big issue with P- with companies being allowed to pay, make you pay for over the air television. Right. I think that NBC and ABC and the CW and everything those like and Fox, those programs that air over the air that have an FCC license to be a free program yeah. free free broadcast should allow people to watch their broadcasts for free with advertising either online or or yeah, on a free insane. app, it's actually no different. Insane. No different than watching it over the air because yeah. that's part of the deal that you make <laughs> with the federal government to get an FCC, FCC right. contract. You you, it's part of the contract. Yeah, it, I don't, it re- I don't literally understand how is. that's allowed. I mean, I don't my parents either. have cable, so I just like right. I steal their cable. I yeah, log into that's the fair, app. That's fair. But I still, mean, I'm with you. Yeah, it's insane. Yeah. Uh, I will say about the CBS All Access app, they are working hard to make. 52 weeks of content that people will want so that people will pay for it right now. Like the numbers skyrocketed when Star Trek came on, but that was only 15 episodes. And so they're now doing a new season of Star Trek plus the, the, the Picard show. Jordan Peele's Twilight Zone reboot is going to air on that, which Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to. Uh, They just announced Stephen Yoon from uh, Walking Dead is going to lead one of the I'll take that off the run. Lead one of the episodes. Uh, That was a Collider exclusive. Jeff Snyder broke that. Oh, cool. Uh, But uh, and they've got the, the spinoff to The Good Wife is on there. Oh, joy. The Good, the good, the good Fight. Well, I'm again the Good Fight. It keeps getting – it just got another WGA nomination. Oh, man. Like the, like the Writers is Guild the really likes the show. Is that the show we watched one episode of? Yeah, the, we watched the series finale of The Good Wife. She's a lawyer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was one of my favorite reviews you ever did in your life, it's, honestly. It's all over the place. So they're trying They're trying to get more content on that app to make it oh, joy. worth the money. But I do, I do strongly agree with you. Any programming that airs for free should be allowed to 
be viewed for free on an app for anyone in the states. Agreed. Yeah. So right, basically, we, it's still your fault. Listen, we yep. still want to. We, we are cutting it close on time here because we don't have Sinead for very long, and I That's really true. want to talk more, Mrs. May, I so. completely understand. All right, jump boom. around. Trailer for the Umbrella Company. Uh, nope. <laughs> that's a bar on Melrose. Nope. Uh, the Umbrella Academy. Kind of looks cool. I mean, Alan Page is in it. Yeah. It's like a superhero it's show. It's yeah. like kind of looks like uh, Trunk Punch Love. Or Sucker Punch. You know what I mean. Drunk Punch Love. What is Trunk Punch? Would you I think it's Sucker Punch. You think it looks like the Paul Thomas Anderson movie with... Punch Drunk Love? No. I mean Sucker, Sucker punch. punch. Sucker Punch. Yeah, where they're like in an academy. I mean, and I hope all. not. Yeah. I hope it's more I hope it's more Kingsman than yes. Sucker yeah. Punch. Okay. But yeah, I mean I think this looks cool. I think uh I think this is the kind of step one of the Netflix doing their own programming that's based on comic books as yeah. opposed to licensing Marvel stuff. Mm, yeah. Good yeah. for them. Good for them. Casting notices uh, Joel McHale is cast as Starman in that. DC Universe's Star Girl. Yeah. Uh I don't really care. I was just saying yesterday, like <laughs> DC should like just take a break and yeah. like focus on what they do have and like refine their TV sh- stuff because that's all they really. I mean, I feel like we're just getting a crap ton of more TV. And it's like I we already have Supergirl, and then there's now there's Star Girl. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I, it'll be really great. Who knows? Maybe it will be, but I'm, I don't know. Like, I, I, and, and, the I don't DC know fan, these. the DC fans seem to like this. Pro- like they're they're going niche with the DC app. Okay. The DC app is like if you Apparently. if you read the comics because the biggest yeah. thing you get there is you get the comics like. Uh, Subscription. Okay. So you That's get, cool. and then yeah. you get all this original programming like Titans and and Doom, Doom Patrol. Patrol and yeah. Yeah. Swamp Stargirl. Thing and Star Girl. So they're going they're going niche there. They know these shows can't really work on a CW like national yeah. broadcast shows, but they can work for the DC hardcore fan base. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I l- freaking love Joel McHale. I do too. Like, I'm actually obsessed with him. Like, I he's think, really funny. I think I love him. Like, I love like a family member. <laughs> you know, like I have a. He weird... would not love you back. No, I know. He's I, not I a know. Nice guy. Not at all. But I tweet him yeah. like, all the time. He probably thinks I'm a freak <laughs> yeah. if he's ever even seen it. He's probably like this bitch. Like, would leave me alone. Did, he get, did, did Joel McHale show on? Joel yeah, McHale? it's gone. It's gone. Right? Yeah, it's gone. I'm, I'm it's a, thanks for bringing that, that up. But... It's a shame that that he got rid of the soup because I loved the soup. Always very good. I like the Joel McHale show too yeah, yeah i don't know but I, uh, just i i liked the soup i liked the writers yeah. on the soup i liked how the soup worked i liked it was on e i mean getting the joe mckale show about the joe mckale show whatever it was called yeah i thought that that was i get it just get the rights to the soup or something like that yeah because but it was the soup it he was brought the soup. back the entire crew that worked on the soup I know, it right. was the same thing it just it doesn't except the executive producers that kept the soup running which right. is why it didn't work yeah I, that's a uh, shame yeah. All right, so we've got a couple of renewals. Goliath got a season three on Amazon. I still need to watch season two. It's yeah, a same. mind. Fuck. Really? Yes, it is. It is so friggin' weird. In Goliath season two. In Goliath season two. I I, hate the word I still weird. don't know if I liked it. I still don't know if I liked it. I need you both to watch it so that we can talk about it because I'm still confused by some of it. See, that's the thing is I hate when somebody's like the show is good, but it's weird. Like you have to really get into mind space. It's like Legion or yeah, Maniac. Yeah, because then I'm like, oh great, so I need to like stretch beforehand and make yeah. sure I've had like eight hours of sleep. <laughs> I gotta walk. I gotta really pay attention, kind right. of a thing. I just like I don't Legion. show. Yeah, I totally forgot about that show. God, I just those shows just I can't yeah. do it's them exhausting. anymore. It's exhausting. And the fact that you just pitch me Goliath like that now, I'm like, wow, well, I'm not gonna watch it. Yeah, but <sighs> it's gonna be like, listen, you but, should go to this restaurant. It's really, really good. Like it's so good. But it's just vegan and everything's covered in nuts. And I'm like, well, I can't eat there. Why am I going to go to that restaurant? Uh, I mean, Billy Bob is still Billy Bob, and he's still like a high-functioning alcoholic. So okay. you'll get a lot of appreciation out of it, if nothing else. Uh, I, I need to start watching Get Shorty. I don't. Because uh, I... My- Gosh, you have not watched it yet? No, I hear it's amazing. Oh my gosh, you need to watch Get Shorty. <laughs> you liked it? Um, I. What sucks is because I started watching it in the middle of okay. the season because, well, my boyfriend's been watching <laughs> Who it. Who does that? Well, he's been watching it from the beginning, and I've been literally like editing every day. But I would like slowly start like taking my headphones off and like watching the TV, and I'd be like, the show is so good. <laughs> And it's only like, well, how many episodes? Um, Nine or ten? Probably. I think, I think season one, I think they're all ten up. Yeah, two, it ten might be episodes. ten episodes, right? So, and he was watching Get Shorty while I was watching Maisel. So I would watch Maisel, and then he would watch Get Shorty. And then I was like slowly realizing I could not not watch the show. Wow. You guys, there right. is nothing, it's not like one of those shows that you watch. I mean, I'd love Chris up, O'Dowd. Yeah, you don't sit up at night wondering like how this changed your life or anything like that. But for sheer entertainment purposes, okay. this show is effing fantastic. Okay. Like, it will make you laugh out loud. It is so funny, and it is so easy to watch and entertaining and really well done. And the acting is amazing. 
thing. All right. Watch it. Like, seriously okay. watch it. That's a like really today. good pitch. Well I, done. You're the first person I've talked to that's really liked it. So that's, Yeah, watch it. Okay. I, I, I love la, la, latter day Ray Romano. As it's well. perfect, and it's perfect for the holidays too, because you don't want something like that's super weird that you have to okay. bend your mind over, right? Fair. So yeah, I think you guys will like and it. And both seasons are out now. Yeah, they're both on Netflix. I think. Yeah. Really? Yeah, both seasons. <gasps> Thanks, Josh. It's an Epics original series. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know and I have Epics too. That's awesome. Um, Good to know. Okay, and then I'm on to get shorty. I will tell you the, the worst news of the week, and, and Sam Richardson tweeted it out and Instagrammed it out, is that Comedy Central canceled Detroiters. Now, I know. okay, listen, Poor I don't went out. I don't watch a ton of Comedy Central anymore because yeah. I just don't. I don't. I. It is one of those networks that I feel like just went by the wayside. Is for 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 me. Sure. Um, but Detroiters is probably the funniest, like goofiest, funniest show that Comedy Central has put out since the uh, Workaholics, without a doubt. It is so effing funny. You would l- love it, Sinead. I mean, absolutely love it. Two seasons, 10 episodes, 30 minute episodes. So it, because it's on uh, Comedy Central, they're like 22 minute episodes. The easiest binge. It is so goofy, so funny. I can't recommend highly enough. And I, I, this is one of those shows where everybody that has watched it was like, I bet it'll get picked up somewhere like a Netflix or whatever. I hope that it does. I really, really hope that it does because it is so, so good. And I wouldn't – I'm not saying it just because Sam Richardson is a buddy of mine. I'm saying it because I legitimately effing love that show. Mm-hmm. You can't stop talking about that show. Yeah. And I was really – when I saw the news, I, I immediately thought of you. It's just – so sorry. It's so good. I can't – yeah. But you guys should watch it. Uh, all right. Let's uh, – we got uh, Netflix debuting a Firefest documentary. Now, is that the one that they – Gave up all that money and then it never happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was the dumpster fire yeah. of a of a festival. I like but it's the guys idea. that did the Jim and Andy movie. Did you watch that? The 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 Andy Kaufman oh, the Jim Carrey yeah. documentary. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that was good. I yeah. loved that documentary, and so I'm really excited about that this doc because it's that team. Oh, that's tight. Yeah, I like that's that. That's tight. Uh, I I, I want to hear more about this because it sounds like a bunch of people that were like semi famous, like oh, Kardashians, they were. They were great. and then they got was, screwed. Yeah, oh, it's amazing. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, Cord and Tish are hosting the Rose Bowl again, this time on YouTube and Twitch. Yes, I love it. So excited. Did you watch Cord and Tish? Did you watch the the Royal Wedding or anything like that? No. So it's um, Will Ferrell and uh, Molly Shannon. Molly yeah. Shannon yeah. And they play these characters, and they basically just improv for three hours. It's yeah. Awesome. And it's hysterical. And they did the Rose Parade last year, and it was amazing. Yeah. And you're the one that told me to watch I, it. Yes. I, I, I wa- That's how I watched the Rose Parade the, this past year. They did yeah. it on Amazon Prime. It's a funny or die thing because Will Ferrell. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, they improv for... They improv for the entire show, but they also wrote for the Rose Parade. They wrote a full script about like they wrote jokes for every single float. Yeah, and they they have runners throughout the episode. Oh, that's it's tight. really, yeah. it's really cool and that they, they ca- let them and they that. stayed in character. Uh, and this year, this year they're doing it uh, again, but it's like going to be free on YouTube and Twitch and a bunch of streaming like very Twitter cool. and everything. Uh, yeah, they, they they went to London and did the royal wedding, which yeah. was very funny. Very that's funny. Awesome. So I, I appreciate them just. Getting into character and just doing a weird, 100%. a weird bit. Yeah, uh, you've got a four-part punk rock documentary from Epics, four Epics from Iggy Pop and John Varvatos. John Varvatos? I know it's John Varvatos. <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. like, uh, I'm pretty sure it's Varvatos. <laughs> Varvatos. But the I first didn't time... want to correct you just in case I was wrong. You know, <laughs> so just like staring at you. The first time I saw John Varvatos lo- lo- uh, label, I think I was like 13 or 14. I was like. Man, this John Varvatos is he's got, he he's really shoes, expensive. He? He's really expensive. It's yeah. like a very expensive label. Um I, I mean I, I've seen enough punk rock documentaries to know that like, okay. That's fair. I, I mean I'm curious to see. I think it's gonna kinda be like the Defiant ones, like having Iggy Pop be part of it. If now if it's more like the Defiant ones, I can take that. I think that'll be kinda cool. Okay. Uh did and, you watch Defiant Ones? The one about Jimmy Ivey and Dr. Dre? No. The four part documentary on HBO? D- watch it immediately. Yeah. It's if you like yeah. hip hop, yeah, you like hip hop. Yep. It's I love music documentaries in general. It just it it starts at the beginning of Jimmy Jimmy Iovine and like his partnership with Dr. Dre, what Interscope Records did for all of that kind of stuff. It is awesome. Okay. I don't know a ton about like I would love to see the backstory of like one small part of punk yeah. instead of the overall punk. That's fair. I, I, I yeah, yeah. I, I, I know so little about the history behind it. Yeah. Like I've seen bits and pieces. Like when Dave Grohl did the, did his uh, Sonic I, Highways yeah, documentary. Yeah, I watched that one. I saw bits and pieces of it here and there. Um, working with working around Henry Rollins for a little while. I 
caught a bunch right. of stuff and heard a few stories, uh, but I don't know like the linear timeline of it. Got it. So I really am hoping that this this will help fill in the gaps in my own knowledge. Yeah. And hopefully entertain me. I just think it's really weird that Iggy Pop and John Farvados are working together. <laughs> yeah. It seems like like are they going to do are, are, are they like, going to work on a shoe? Didn't like Tom Ford do he did that movie the blue beautiful Matt, Tom Ford did a movie didn't he? Like I'm thinking know. of clothing designers doing movies. Wasn't he name checked in a in a in a Jay Z song? <laughs> I don't. Mm-hmm. Direct yeah, yeah Tom Ford yeah. directed a single man that the uh, um, what. Yes. Uh, hold on. He directed a single... Nocturnal Animals. The one with uh, Amy Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Tom Ford. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Wait, I remember seeing that and making a joke about it, too. No, yeah. it's Tom but Ford. I was like, oh, yeah. look, Tom Ford directed this. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. I know, right? So it's like these fashion designers that have a good eye for things. And listen, that's I don't know. That's crazy. I mean, it's kind of yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's funny. Right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, ABC picks up a, a Fox Pilot. Uh, Fox Pilot blessed this mess with Lake Bell and Dak Shepard. Now listen, I like Dak Shepard. Mm-hmm, me too. Do I? I Lake Bell. Just mm-hmm. she, she started to write and direct. She started to write, direct, and star in some of her own projects. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I think, started to not watch, watch, and watch those. Yeah, projects. I mean, yeah, it, it, it. They feel a little mumblecorey uh, to me. Yes. Uh, I think she works sometimes. Uh, it sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. This one sounds you're in, being very diplomatic. This right one now. sounds interesting for I two think reasons. It, she works sometimes. So sometimes. sometimes. Uh, no, this one. This one sounds if interesting you brush your teeth for two so two week. reasons. It'll sort of work. Two reasons. One. Uh, it sounds like an update of Green Acres. Okay. Uh, like it's like a city couple that move out to the country. To oh, like, nothing greater than that. Yeah, but. The interesting thing is that this was a pilot for Fox uh-huh. through Fox Television, and now because of the merger, Fox has passed on the show. ABC's picking it up. Oh, great! So <laughs> it's well, Fox all, passes on it. It's got to be great. All together, <laughs> all together. And, hey, yeah. Fox passed on Nine Nine, and now it's coming back uh, next tr- month. Fox didn't pass; they canceled. They, they straight up canceled it. Yes, and now it's back on back on NBC coming in January. So listen, lest we forget. Okay. It could it could be good. Could be. It could be good. It could be good. It's a single cam comedy. Listen, I love it's Dex from Liz, Shepard. Liz Merriweather's company. Dex mm-hmm. Shepard gets the biggest like bum rap in Hollywood because he's like Dax Shepard's a douche. He is not. That dude is awesome. He was awesome in Parenthood. Mm-hmm. He he his podcast is actually pretty enjoyable. I really feel like Baby Mama is a very underrated movie, and Dax Shepard is very funny in that movie. Like I, love that movie. I gotta get that everybody's like Chips was the worst movie. Guys, Chips made Baywatch. I mean, Baywatch made Chips look like an Oscar winner. I mean, Baywatch was terrible. Chips was actually very entertaining. Mm, really? And yes. You were the only person I've I ever know. talked to that That's liked fine. Chips. Chips was actually very entertaining. And I think it's all because of Dax Shepard and Michael Pena. But Dax Shepard, regardless, if I, I hope it's not like we're on a farm, but it's on a lot. Do you know what I mean? Like if it's it's totally on a three cam and we're just on like look at the farm and then look at this astro turf that's supposed to be the green yeah. the green part of the farm. That's the only thing I'm doing. Okay, let's uh is Frank gonna come in here yeah, for this, yeah, this yeah. news? Yeah, hey hey <coughs> Hey Frank. We're talking about uh we're talking about something you might want to talk about real quick. Frank, get in here and get, get in, on Frank. this microphone. Get in, Frank. Just just crouch down on this mic real quick. This is uh Frank the editor. Frank Lucatardo. Frank the uh, scoot on in so you're in the wide shot there. So uh Frank We've we've got news an that a, a new show is Johnny in the works. Depp at, fan. A new show is in the works at TBS. Oh, uh, from My jacket in from, his honor from your friend Tom DeLong. So uh, can you can you tell us uh, real quick <laughs> what the I show looks is? Looks like a rock star. I'm so right nervous to be here right uh, now. Why? Why? I'm sitting next to Sinead. I know it's intimidating. Yeah, Frank, yeah. what's up? <laughs> so the show's called Strange Times. What's it Strange is. Times? It's based on a novel that he wrote. Okay. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> air quotes. Off to a good start. It, it came Angels from his, and air quotes. It came, it came from his imagination. He ah, didn't write it. Oh, I see. Fair enough. Uh, which is also a graphic novel, and it's gotcha. about uh, these like I think it's four young kids who are investigating the paranormal. Gotcha. And they're like capturing ghosts and looking for aliens. And so this is sort of like Stranger Things. It's a little bit. Or like, or like. Did you read the book? I did. Okay. And you enjoyed it? It it is aimed at like 12 year olds, I think. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Perfect. There are a lot of spelling mistakes (laughs) in the book. 
<laughs> but I enjoyed oh, yeah, that's it. Amazing. I enjoyed it. All right, all right, all right. Okay. And this is going to be, and this is so. I assume this is going to be an animated series on TBS. Uh, it sounds, it sounds a little Stranger Things. Sounds a little Ghostbusters. E sounds a little Muppet Babies. So this is kids. A, little, a little Muppet Babies because they're yeah. kids. <laughs> like like Muppet Babies yeah, meets it Ghostbusters. Takes place in Southern California. Okay. They're, okay. Uh, skateboarding. Yeah. You know. Okay. Very Tom you know DeLonge. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Interesting. So will you watch every single episode? Uh, yes, I will. <laughs> Even if you don't like the pilot. Yes. All right. Interesting. And that's just because you're a huge Tom DeLonge fan. That's it. All right. There right. is your non-biased right. opinion from Frank. <laughs> <I liked laughs> it. Frank, you're the best, dude. All Thanks right. for stopping Frank. in. You're that welcome awesome. anytime. Dep Talk yeah. coming soon to uh, Collateral. Yeah. Nope. Nope. Still not happening. Sorry, Frank. De Dep Space Nine. Hey. Uh, yeah. I got yeah. all kinds of Star Trek uh, uh, puns yeah. this week. Thanks. Thanks for that. All right. Uh, and finally, our last story of the day, before we cut ties here. And then start talking about Maze Hole, yes. which you guys can get on the feed right now. Just check it out. It's the best show on TV right now. We can't talk highly enough about it, but we have one more story. The Punisher is premiering in January. It's probably going to get canceled at the end of January or the day after it airs yeah. or in February. Uh, and that was basically what we talked about up top. Yeah. So we don't have to talk about it. Yeah. I think cool they should just wait till the show, like the two weeks after. Okay. I think it's rude. I think it's really rude to premiere a show and then announce no that it gets well. canceled like the day after. We all know it's going to happen. Right. So give it two weeks. Like respect the people that made the show happen regardless of like h how good or bad or whatever. But Punisher's actually good. It's really good. And I'll say that about every show. Even Iron Fist season two. Like I... And you know how I feel about that. Right. Just give it two weeks before you announce that the show's been canceled. It's actually kind of like disrespectful I in don't my disagree. opinion. I don't disagree. Uh, all right. That's but Danny your... Rand still sucks. <laughs> Yep. Get it in there, Sinead. <laughs> uh, that's your episode of TV Talk. We are going to have uh, – there will be a TV Talk next week before the Christmas holiday. Uh, we also will be doing like a special kind of top 10-ish kind of a thing yep. for TV Talk as well that will air during the Christmas holiday. Uh, you guys can subscribe to the channel here. Tell some friends. Subscribe to the podcast channel. They're all, also on Collider Podcasts is the video version of this. Uh, there are you know the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel review if you guys want us to review other stuff. Again, listen, we are not in the business of doing like th reviews two and three weeks before the shows come out. If you want that, you should go to collider.com. The writers get access to all of that stuff early. We don't have the bandwidth to do that here. But if you want those reviews, you can go check that out. Or you can tweet at them and see if they'll do a video review of that and send it over here to the podcast feed and we can put it up. We are not we, an all equally employed whatever. But if the shows are worthy of review, then we will do them, and Thad and I kind of make the decision on that. Speaking, speaking of which, uh, there's a review up now. Dorian and I watched the Elseworlds crossover, oh, okay. the CW Elseworlds crossover. Nice. Dorian's been watching the shows very religiously. I uh, do not, mm -hmm. so I kind of went in blind to see if it could work as a three uh, three part like movie kind of yes. thing. So we reviewed that. That's up. Th that's on the feed right now. If you uh, if you watched that, you can check it out. It does have spoilers, uh, so you should watch the three part first if yep. you if you care to. But uh, yeah, th there will be some other reviews as they happen. Uh, but definitely tune in to Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. One hundred percent. And thank you so much for joining us. Shane, on the you're the TV best. Talk Thanks, show. You're the best. Uh, great Happy having to be you here. here. Yeah, I uh, got to have you back again soon. Uh, we'll talk and make fun of stuff like we usually do. It's the best. <laughs> Love it. It's the best. Uh, I'm at Josh McCuga. Uh, on Twitter and Instagram, the Josh McCuga Show on YouTube. You guys can watch Collider Sports Time, Collider Live, all that kind of fun stuff. That's Sinead DeFreeze. Do you want to tell me where you can oh, find Oh, yeah, it? of course. Uh, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> at Sinead DeFreeze on Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, everywhere. All that stuff. Wonderful. Dad. Uh, at Thad Williams, and uh, thank you all. As always, put down the book, pick up the mouth. <laughs>